Welcome back to FHL Community Episodes. We're so glad that you can join us again. Last time we talked about take a fresh look at our community. You know, sometimes uh, having new lenses put on your eyes, over your eyes, make a big difference. You know, now it's uh, during summer, people put on the sunglasses and sometimes you will see like, wow, look at the trees are so green and uh, the clouds are so, is so white and the sky is so blue and all of this. And, and you know what, we can also intentionally put on our new sets of eyes, our lenses from the world point of view and also from the spiritual point of view. And that's what we talk about in the last couple of weeks, that we sometimes we just need to step back. When you are in the battle, it's, it's hard to see everything, right? And then also uh, one of my uh, examples last time was, was in the chessboard. When you look at the chessboards, don't, don't just look at the few pieces. You need to take a look at the four corners so, so that you can see what's going on. Now, that's easy to say during the game, but in, you know, in, in life, Sometimes it's hard for us to take a look back, step back, and then look from a 30,000 foot view and, and look at what's happening in our community, in our own lives, and in our families. So it's, it's very important that we take a look at that. So first I spoke about the, the, the worldview, because we live in the world. We cannot just look at Okay, let's take a look at this in all, 100% spiritual. You know, just like what Jesus says, I, I only do what the Father uh, tells me to do, what I hear He does, and I only uh, say what, what, what I hear uh, from the Father. So the same thing, He lived in, bo in both dimensions, and maybe in multi-dimension, but as far as human beings, we, we live in maybe two dimensions, right? One is the physical and one is the spiritual, and some people may say one is virtual and, and all these things, but basically those two things. If we can take a look at, at our world, what's happening in our ministries, in our lives, from the, the worldview, right? That's why we need to read the news and, and what's going on. And, and then from, from that, we need to take a look at uh, the, the, the spiritual aspect of, of our lives, which is the spiritual worldview. So hopefully uh, you were blessed uh, to, to hear those two different kinds of worldviews. Uh, taking a fresh look, again, a fresh look, you know, sometimes things can get stale. It's just like the same humdrum, right? The same thing that's going on, but if we just step back and we just look at, uh, at our world, take a deep breath, right? Take a deep breath and look at what's happening from the worldview and also from the spiritual worldview. And you will be surprised that uh, God will reveal things uh, to you and also from your own mind and experience because God had given us brains to think on our own also that you will see, wow, you know, I should have looked at this in a different way uh, or in different angle. So again, hopefully you were blessed. Now this time we're going to talk about volunteers. You know, uh, whether you're a for-profit or non-profit, especially for non-profits, volunteers are the lifeblood of non-profits. They're very, very important. Not, not that I'm saying that the staff are not important, the paid staff, but volunteers are the lifeblood of nonprofits. And, you know, I'm really excited to, uh, to bring you this message today. So volunteer is at the center of community building. If you are a politician, if you are a religious leader, if you're a businessman, if you want to build community, you need to take a look at the role or the roles of volunteers, uh, uh, you, you know, in community building. Now, you may recall that it was not my intention to start Faith, Hope, and Love back in 2005. Uh, I was just, uh, I just went on a mission trip, as, as you recall, you know, 2002, 2003, in Costa Rica. And uh, I, because 
money-wise and time-wise, I wasn't able to go back. So I thought, well, if this is true to me, it must be true to other people, people who has a big heart to volunteer to help out in their community, but don't have, you know, uh, enough money to go outside, you know, the mission field. Because again, some of us, we may have a misnomer that, hey, I'm going on a mission trip. So where are you going? And some people say, well, I'm, I'm going to South America. I'm going to Africa. I'm going to Asia or whatever it is. But mission field, somebody said mission field is the space between your feet. So as you step back uh, out of your church, as you step back out of businesses, as you step back outside your house, that is your mission field because mission is not just an event. And many times we think about mission as, as, as an event, but mission as a lifestyle. So to have a lifestyle, I didn't have enough money. I said, hey, what can we do to help our own community to have a mission trip right here in our own city, in our own backyard? So uh, again, um, you know, I, I gathered uh, several pastors, seven pastors, seven churches, and, and we start thinking about what can we do? What can we do to help our own neighborhoods? What can we do to help our own uh, families even, and even our own organizations uh, to volunteer. So we had 10, um, about 10 projects performed by 200 volunteers for the entire first week of FHL week, which is mission trip in your own backyard. It was uh, self-funded, meaning the leaders and volunteers will have to come up with their own resources needed to accomplish the projects. And again, volunteers provided the resources, the manpower, the time, talent, and treasure uh, in our first mission trip back in 2005. Then after casting the vision, the volunteers willingly, you know, offered to help even more, provide financial assistance to complete the projects. See, vision is very powerful. And it says in Proverbs 29:18 where there is no vision, the people perish. But he that keepeth the law, happy is he. That's from King James Version. So again, in order for us to, to involve others, whether they are paid, and, and especially the unpaid, we have to always share the vision. And that's what God had, had shown me, I just had like a vision, hey, it will be great if, if we can gather the, commu the community, the volunteers, to willingly invest their time, talent, and treasure in their own backyard, together with their families, grandma, or grandchildren, or spouses, and, and as a family to go out there and, and volunteer and give back to the community. So after that first uh, mission, uh, back in 2005, mission trip in our own backyard, again, it was not an organization yet, I started receiving calls from the pastors and they were asking me, Merlin, what are we gonna do next year? I said, what do you mean next year? I saw the vision become a reality, you all go ahead and do it. But the pastors with their encouragement and also the encouragement of their congregation who had great experience, and we'll talk more about experience is one of the key things to, to, to motivate, to, to encourage uh, the, uh, the, the volunteers. But anyway, they had a great experience and, and, and they talked to their pastors and their leaders and their leaders encouraged me because they themselves also had great experience. So it's all good for the volunteers who had passion to help and felt that they helped the neighborhood. You know, again, the experience, they felt that they, they helped the neighborhood and also the volunteers got connected with the community through projects and services. And, and that's why I mentioned earlier that volunteering is at the core of community building. So I spoke with a pastor of a church uh, during those, those time and said that the volunteers are the extension of the staff. And, and I spoke with uh, the pastor just recently and I said, you know, what do you think is the role 
of volunteers in, in the church because he's, he's a pastor and, and he said the same thing. Volunteers are extension of the staff. They are normally in the front line. That means they are the ones who represent your church. They're the ones who represent your organization. And listen to this, they carry on the vision of an organization because they get, they get so excited. And with that, they have something deep inside more than what money can, can buy. So volunteers are the lifeblood of a nonprofit organization. And you know, you just have to think about it, whether you're a volunteer, whether you're a leader, how many times do you share the, 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 the vision of your organization or to actually remember the vision of the organization? It's very, very important. And that's why you cannot share the vision of your organization so many times. You just have to keep uh, reminding yourself, even yourself, and also the staff and, and, and the volunteers. So uh, a large part of the U.S. volunteerism spirit, I just want to give you just a quick background here, started with churches stemming from different religious values. And, and again, with the religious values, when we talk about beliefs, that's still part of the vision, right? So uh, it started, when I was looking at volunteerism, it, st it started uh, from the religious uh, uh, organizations. And the common root, root of these values come from service beyond self. And, and as a Christian, that's what uh, Jesus showed us that service beyond himself, he, he actually sacrificed himself. God himself sacrificed his own son, and he himself sacrificed himself for um, the, the people, for you and I. And, and that's the vision that Jesus uh, brought to the people, the first volunteers, you know, uh, that, who were the first volunteers of, of Jesus are the 12 disciples. They saw the vision. They saw that like, wow, this man has a vision of service beyond self, both an obligation and a joy. Do you hear that? Uh, you know, service beyond self or volunteerism is both an obligation, but also brings much joy to those who serve. So volunteerism, uh, you know, I talk about Jesus Christ in the New Testament, but it's also recorded in Old Testaments when the Israelites celebrated their first king. Remember that? The first king and, and, and um, the prophet uh, Samuel told uh, Saul that, hey, you don't need to have a king because your king is God. But they said, no, we want to be like other nations who have kings. So Samuel said, okay, well, you know, I'll ask God. And then God selected Saul, the first king of Israelites. And then there were many volunteers, many volunteers who followed. You know why they followed him? Not just because of Saul, but also the vision and what they saw, you know, the worldview is just like, we're going to follow the king and we're going to invest our own time, money and talents and even our own lives to serve the king. And then after King Saul, as we all know, the second king was King David. So they voluntarily follow King David in the battlefield, helping the villagers to tend their farms and their flocks. You know, uh, the, the, the third uh, king was uh, King Solomon, and, and King Solomon was the peaceful king, and they build Israelites and things through who? The volunteers. And um, so also, you know, he, he was able to conquer uh, uh, other nations and, and villages uh, through, through those times. By who? By the volunteer soldiers. And now, uh, leap, leap forward in our own nation, the volunteers, we volunteer at uh, different uh, volunteer core groups and, and things. So again, this volunteering started as a religious, the vision, the beliefs, and the values of the people. Um, so let's take a look at, at uh, volunteers even more closer. But before I say that, uh, I think this is something that we need to take a look at, that in the New Testament, it records many examples of volunteerism. And, and it says there that, that 
through the volunteers, the, the gospel expanded from where? Jerusalem, Samaria, and to the ends of the world. So again, if you're thinking about volunteer, volunteering, start in your own backyard, start in your own city, and then expand as, as what the Bible uh, had given us uh, some examples. So let's take a look at the value of volunteers. First of all, is the economic value of, of volunteers based on FHL experience. So this is just, you know, we, we bring this closer ho to home. Now in our own organization, uh, F on, on our own experience, a typical food pantry receives an average of $2,000 worth of services every month from the volunteers. So if you multiply that by 12, that's $24,000 worth of work from volunteers. That's based on the annual average of, of uh, hourly rate of 2720. So now we are in 2021, uh, mid 2021, and that's, that's what they said, 2720, maybe even higher. So volunteers are truly an extension of staff of an organization or of, of a nonprofit. So through volunteer services, again, we are still in the economic value of volunteers. Through uh, volunteer services, the nation's gross domestic products, that means the, the value of goods and services are, is increased. Th that's because more people are served by the volunteers and more people are encouraged by the volunteers. A church or a nonprofit saves money because of volunteers. So if you're a, you're a pastor, you know, uh, how, can you, how can you have like, like a home group, right? Or, a, or an outreach or maybe cleaning the building or, or, or talking to others to, to come to your church or talk about Jesus or talk about things. These are the volunteers. You know, uh, during our training, our actual training, sometimes I tell the pastors or the leaders, they said, hey, you know, you need to take care of your volunteers because if you don't take care of the volunteers, sooner or later, when you call the volunteers, they will, they will not answer you. And then, and then you call them again and maybe they answer you, they make some excuses and before you know it, that, that's because they lost that, that, that motivation. And that's why it's a caution for, for all of us. And it's a reminder for all of us that whenever, when, when we call volunteers, don't just call them because you want them to do something. You want to call them so that you can care for them. We'll talk more about that. So a nonprofit earns, listen to this, a nonprofit earns additional income through volunteers who work your, 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 your uh, fundraising. Yeah, you may have some staff and also you may have some consultants, but most of the people who do the job, most of the people who invite others for the fundraiser, uh, they are your volunteers. Volunteers, I tell you what, volunteers work with their hearts, not just for the money. And volunteers have different pay. Their pay is satisfaction that they are able to help other people or an organization. And that's why uh, many times volunteers can raise more resources than most paid staff. Can you imagine that? I don't know if we, if we really, we have to really take a look at that. Again, whether you're, you're, you're a hospital, you're, you're a church, a nonprofit, religious organization, we have to take care of the volunteers, not because we can get a lot from them, that, but because the ultimate beneficiaries of the volunteers' uh, work services uh, are, is our community. So that's for the social impact. So let's take a look, uh, or the, the uh, economic value of volunteers. So let's take a look at the social impact, which sometimes could be worth more than the economic impact of the community. So let me tell you why. Through the countless efforts and services of volunteers to a community, they foster relationships and encourage the residents to become more engaged and make a difference in others', others lives. So what does that mean? Volunteerism cultivates caring 
for one another. So that's why when, when we have our, our food pantry, part of the training again is that you, we need to have a devotion uh, to, to get ourselves back in the more major things. The more major things that our number one customers, especially in Missional Food Pantry, are not the people out there. Our number one customers are the people in here or the volunteers. Because if you don't have the volunteers, again, you will find yourself doing it by yourself. So we need our, our number one customers are the volunteers. But you know what? Once the leader bring the vision to and ensure the vision and encouragement uh, with the volunteers, they themselves motivate not only themselves, but they motivate one another. And because they're motivated, and now they see the vision, they go out there and, and serve others. And once they, they serve others, they serve not because they are getting paid. They serve because they have the heart to make a difference in somebody else's lives. So again, volunteerism cultivates caring for one another for the volunteers and also the volunteers to uh, the recipients of the services. Next, it enhances the sense of security and friendship. I don't know about you, when, when I volunteer, I feel secure. I am in, in a group of people uh, with the same mindset. I'm in the group of people with the same belief that's just like, we can do this together. So you don't feel like you're all alone. So you feel a sense of security, and because of the sense of security, you cultivate friendship. Now I tell you what, you want a peaceful society? Flourish the friendship, flourish the, the relationship, encourage to, to interact with one another, and we will have a more peaceful uh, society, more peaceful uh, uh, city. And you may say, yeah, you know, there's a lot of things going on, but I tell you what, it's not the arms, it's not the tools, it's not, it's about, it's all about people. If people understand really that let's care for each other, let's cultivate friendship and relationship, then we can cultivate uh, the, the end result of that would be a peaceful family and a peaceful city. Society become more involved and collaborate with each other. This is big. That's why I mentioned earlier that the social impact could be uh, more important than the economic impact. All the billions of dollars of, of, of gross domestic products in, in the U.S. alone are, you know, are brought because of the volunteers, but the social impact can, can be even more. So when people, listen to this, it's like you heard about snowball effect, right? When, when volunteerism continues to grow and grow and more people talk about the, the personal satisfaction, the personal fulfillment that they, that they receive when they volunteer, you will, you will see that it's going to be a snowball effect because they talk, it's contagious. Like, like what we talked about before, that we can influence others and then others can influence others and so on and so forth. So society become more involved in helping uh, beyond uh, what they can get and then also collaborate. It's very important. Collaboration, especially now, uh, post-COVID, uh, more and more companies are coming together, working together, nonprofits working together, churches have, have more unity together. That's because I, I think that's God's plan. It's the unity uh, in, in, in uh, the body of Christ. And lastly, under uh, social impact is uh, new friendships are formed and the existing friendships are strengthened. So, you know, when you volunteer, you meet new people, right? And then once you meet new people, now you, you, you get to know one another. Friendship start uh, uh, quicker when you are working together, not just like sitting on, the de on, on, on your chair and working on a desk and, and computer things. So new friendships are formed and existing friendships are strengthened. You know, some people when they volunteer uh, together and they say, 
oh, wow, you know, I, I, I meant to talk to you for a long time. You're from another church now because you move out of the city. And how's it going? So friendships are strengthened uh, once again. So um, we will, the next one that we're going to talk about is the spiritual transformation. That's another impact that uh, volunteerism can, can bring. There are a lot of impacts, but again, uh, in these uh, uh, sessions that we're going to have is uh, the, the economic uh, value, the social impact, and then the spiritual transformation. Uh, so we will pick that back up at our next session. Uh, and, and remember that you have the power to bring kingdom solutions and resources to the world problems and challenges. So until then, God bless you and see you at the next FHL Community episodes.